All right, so the purpose of this video, uh, we're just going to discuss how the Mazda transmission works, not how an automatic transmission in general works. What we're going to go through is kind of a high level, show you some pictures, show you some diagrams, um, some actual parts inside there from a transmission that we recently opened up out of a CX-5. It's the FW series, so it's what's considered the medium case. Um, what we're looking at right here is called the apply chart. Um, it shows what clutches and what solenoids make each gear. So there are five friction clutches um, in the transmission and then a one-way clutch commonly referred to as a sprag, a low reverse diode, um, roller clutch. has a whole ton of different names. purpose of it is to stop one of the planetaries from rotating a certain way. Okay, so this is the tag that's on all of the outside of the Sky Active drives. Um, the easiest way to decode what's going on, you see the PYNAB. That's the engine size it goes to, where it's a PY. That means it goes to a 2.5 liter. Um, the build date is in Julian numbers in there. And then underneath that, you have the actual um, transmission series, and then the three-digit code after that. So the FW means it's the FW6 AEL family. There's the ET, the EV, and then the bigger GW, and then there's a smaller one called the CW, um, which we won't go into too much detail here. They're mostly all the same uh, basic design, but they do have differences internally uh, based on strength. And when I go through the parts in here, I'll show you which ones are strengthened. The GW series, the GW series are the bigger ones used in all the factory turbo cars, and then the 2.2 diesel. The 1.8 diesel uses a variation of the FW. Uh, okay, this is the transmission out on the jack, getting ready to go into disassembly. As you can see, they're nice and compact, um, not very big at so all. So we are going to spend some time uh, talking about the torque converter itself. It's what makes a big difference in these transmissions versus a lot of the others on the market. They're able to go into lockup as early as 5 miles an hour. What lockup is, is it creates a rigid connection between the engine and the transmission, the rest of the body. Um, what that does is it improves fuel economy, uh, gets rid of some of the mushiness that an automatic transmission has been known for, makes for quicker shifts, etc. Um, how they're able to make this work is they use a dampener um, that's very, very big and with a lot of spring tension inside there. And then they use a stack up of lockup clutches instead of one singular clutch like a lot of vehicles still do on the road. You have four friction discs, you've got two that hook to the cover and two that transmit uh, to the rest of the transmission when they lock up gives you the nice solid feel. This is out of the smaller units. All the torque converters are supplied to Mazda by Exidy. Um, they work really well for what they are and what they're asked to do. Um, this picture is just showing more of a close-up of the clutches themselves. Um, give you a little bit better view of that. Uh, this picture is the larger, the GW series uh, converter. It's about an inch bigger in overall. The clutches are significantly bigger, um, and the damper itself is quite a bit bigger to help handle the extra power that comes from those engines and to help them survive. So what I'll be doing for the rest of the video um, is discussing components in depth. This, what I'll do is I'll have a cutaway like this to show before and then have the components highlighted in red. So we're going to talk about the input shaft. Um, for the FW version of the transmission, the input shaft is fairly small. This may become an issue for higher powered builds. All the power in the transmission has to go through that. And it is one of the parts that is um, strengthened in the GW and bigger series. It's a couple millimeters bigger and overall the length is bigger. Um, over, yeah, overall dynamic everywhere is just bigger and stronger. but. It, it could become an issue for sudden uh, boost application, stuff like that. Um, they can twist, they can break. See it happen to big diesel trucks that are putting out a lot of power, they'll twist the shafts in half.
All right, so let's talk about the oil pump. Um, it's actually cast iron. Both halves are very, very strong. Uh, this one has very little wear. The rotors go on that shaft right there. I'll show those in a minute. Um, a lot of newer transmissions, that's aluminum. We see them, especially the GM6 L80s. They tear um, the housings up. They blow up. That's the pump bushing. It actually has some wear to it, so we'll be putting a new pump bushing in there. Um, we've got the rotors themselves in the parts cleaning basket right here. It's getting ready to go through with some other stuff. Got the dipstick, the... These are the two rotor halves. It's your rotor style. They go together. Um, it's ability to make really good pressure. The gears are nice and cast. I don't suspect the oil pump is going to be an issue at all on these based on the wear we've seen. This transmission has 130,000 miles on it. It's out of a 2017. Um, it looks like it's lived a very hard life. It was probably a rental car at some point. And that's the cool, the lube return to the back of the transmission. Runs in the case. Um, those rotors go in between these two halves, and then it's all bolted together. Then the torque converter itself actually splines um, to the splines right there, and that's what turns the pump. And as we go in deeper to the transmission, now we talk about the high-low clutch drum. It's an assembly. Um, all versions of the transmission use five low clutches, five high clutches. The low clutches are the outer ones. The high clutches are the inner they turn off and on. Um, it's what sends the power to the different planetaries to make the one through six gears. They, at least one of these sets will always be engaged. And then the input shaft splines right there on part of that one. This is another part of the transmission that's actually um, significantly upgraded in the GW series versus the smaller one. Um, the clutches themselves are about an inch bigger in diameter overall leads to quite a bit more surface area. Next up are the high and the low clutch hubs themselves. They spline into the back of that assembly and then depending on um, which gear it's in they will transmit power to the input shaft when those clutches are engaged. So this is the primary gear, the secondary gear, and the output gear. Um, these are three of the major components that make up the final drive ratio of all the units. The primary gear is always driven uh, part of the input shaft. It's the top one there. And then you have the secondary gear, which we'll be able to see a little bit better when I've got a picture of the case. Um, those two turn together. The... the uh, Secondary gear is on a shaft, which has the output gear on it, which then turns the differential. So there's four gear measurements that make up what the final drive ratio is in all of these units. So this is the case um, on its side. The gear on the right is the primary gear. The gear on the left is the secondary gear with the output gear to the differential on it. That nut in the middle is like torqued down to 250 foot-pounds. That's what people will run into when actually opening these up and trying to swap around gear ratio um, variations between them. The good news is most of the primary and secondary gear ratios themselves are the same. The This gear that right here, what I'm pulling out, um, sits down in there. The reluctor-looking thing is what the parking pawl holds on to you would have to swap all of that over to actually change the final drive in these units. It's not just the ring gear and the output gear that you would need. And then the differential um, slides down in that spot right there with the bearing. Here you can see a little bit of debris. Um, what happened to this transmission is the torque converter came apart. There's debris everywhere like that.
Uh, this is the differential section. This is another spot that there is a difference um, between the heavier duty versions and the lighter. The actual lighter duty version, this is a pretty pretty healthy size differential. I don't expect we'll see much issue with this. Um, then the all-wheel drive versions are very close to this, but they do have one difference um, on the snout where it sticks up and how the axle splines in there and then the power transfer unit splines over the top. So I don't have an all-wheel drive diff out uh, to show the difference right now, but the AXEL, that's how you signify between all-wheel drive and front-wheel drive. That part that's circled there is an actual spline that sticks up. This is a cutaway of what the transfer unit looks like on these. The black outline portion in the middle is the passenger side axle that goes through it. The red is how the power transfer works inside the transfer unit. The part that sticks out on the left side is what goes into the splines of that front differential. So every time the front differential is moving, the drive shaft, the rear drive shaft is always moving. It can't move independent of that. There's a damper in there that makes things a little bit quieter, some bearings, a very simple power transfer unit. All the Mazda all-wheel drive systems currently on sale operate like this. This is the low reverse and the Sprag, one-way clutch, low diode, whatever you want to call it, um, section. How this works, you have a set of low reverse clutches and then a Sprag. Um, the Sprag hangs on to make first gear work, and it lets go um, to make reverse work. The low reverse clutches also engage just to break part of the planetary there. The FW and the smaller ones use four clutches right here. The GW uses five. This is the Sprag. This is makes a ratcheting sound. It can only turn one way, as you can see here. When you are driving your vehicle and you don't stop when you go from drive to reverse, you are putting all the weight in your transmission or in your vehicle on this one piece in your transmission. Um, don't do that very bad. If you break that Sprag, you lose first gear. The only way to fix it is to open the transmission up and fix it that way. So all three of the planetaries are in the back of the case. Um, this is another part that's significantly different between the GW and the smaller series. The FW series, which we've got here, uses three pinions um, in each planetary. The GW uses a four pinion in this one right here, a four pinion in the one following behind it, and then a five pinion on the last one. They're considerably stronger um, they have the ability to transfer more power through them. Um, very compact on all the units, so that's one of the things that uh, contributes to the overall length of the family. This is the 2.6 and the 3.5 reverse clutch set. Um, the 2.6 is in the middle, the 3.5 reverse is at the back of the case on the cover. This is another, it comes as an assembly. Um, you can pull it all the way apart. You can see the fluid there is pretty bad. Um, they grab different parts of the planetaries to engage the different gears. Uh, you've got the pressure plate on top, and then you've got the stack up there for the 2.6s. Uh, the 2.6s on the GW are a five clutch then sometimes on the fw and the ew you only have four or three um four is the max some of the versions have uh three the newer mazda 3 gen 4 stuff has a three stack right there 
And then on the 3.5 reverse, the GW has four clutches, and then the smaller version has three. All right, this is the TCM on top with two speed sensors on the valve body itself. Um, they read right there, pretty robust. It's actually a pretty good sized valve body. You've got linear solenoids that run everything. A um, little bit of chettle on the magnet there. Again, overall inside this thing was not too bad. Um, the converter just came apart and filled everything with debris.